Brittany and welcome back to Brittany Unplugged and as you can tell by the title of this video today we're going to be talking about the four things you never need to apologize for. So if you want to know the four things that you never need to apologize for in any particular circumstance at all then keep watching. Now apologizing for something is expressing regret for something that you have done when you have done something wrong. So a lot of the times we tend to put ourselves in situations where we feel the need to apologize even if we haven't done anything wrong. You may feel like you've come across as rude when in actual reality, you really just set your boundaries, but someone else probably didn't take it well because maybe they're used to using you, maybe they're used to walking all over you and stuff like that. So you need to make sure that you don't find yourself apologizing for things that you really don't need to apologize for. So the following four things are things that you most definitely never need to apologize for. Now, the first thing that you never need to apologize for is expecting the bare minimum from someone that you care about. Now, the moment you become very emotionally invested in someone, whether it's a friend, whether it's a family member, whether it's a romantic partner, it's almost like you enter that relationship with an un unwritten contract, a contract which you may not really see, but it's something that you've agreed upon when entering that relationship. And in this unwritten contract, you automatically promise each other to give each other the bare minimum. That's the basis of this contract, the bare minimum being honesty, compassion, loyalty, companionship, all of those qualities are the bare minimum when entering a relationship. Now, one thing about expecting the bare minimum from someone that you care about is that expecting the bare minimum means that you're not really asking for too much. When meeting that person and becoming friends with that person and forming a bond with that person, those qualities which are under the category of the bare minimum, they fall under things that you don't need to ask too much for. If you find that you need to ask someone to support you, you need to ask someone to be loyal to you, you need to ask someone to be honest to you. It's those small things that you really don't need to ask for. It's supposed to come in the relationship anyways. Now, I literally had to find the definition of the bare minimum so that you realize that expecting the bare minimum from someone is really not asking for too much. The definition of the bare minimum is the smallest possible quantity or the least fulfilling but still adequate condition that is required, acceptable or suitable for some kind of purpose. Now, if your friend is not doing the bare minimum and you know that they could be doing more, for example, if they can't reciprocate energy, if they can't congratulate you on your wins, if they can't support you through your hustle, if they can't be there for you in your darkest hours, even in a romantic relationship, if your partner is inconsistent with you, they're never clear about their intentions or you really need to find reasons to trust them. That is the bare minimum that comes with any form of relationship. If you need to find ways to get the bare minimum out of that person and it doesn't come naturally in that relationship, you need to exit that relationship. Because if you need to keep searching for the bare minimum, the things that must come with the relationship, the things that attract you to the person, or even in a friendship, the things that really bring your bond together, then it's really going to taint your bond. Now, the one way for you to command the bare minimum from someone or the one way to make sure that you get the bare minimum from someone in a friendship or in a relationship or even in the household or with another family member, you need to stop normalizing pardoning people who cannot give you the bare minimum. When push comes to shove, they can't be the best friend or best partner to you when you can be the best friend or the best partner to them. By pardoning these people, for example, you could say, oh, maybe they never see my messages. Maybe they're too busy to respond to me. Oh, maybe they're too busy to hype up my business. Oh, maybe they're too busy so they don't have time to be there for me every time I'm upset. Oh, maybe this, maybe this. Oh no, maybe this. You keep on making those little excuses for them. And the more you keep making those excuses for them, the more you pardon it and the more you allow it and the more you allow it into your circle. And it's leaving way for the person to hurt you even more because they cannot supply you with the bare minimum in that relationship. It's like you keep making excuses for them. Oh, maybe they didn't see my message. Oh, maybe they didn't have time to hype up my business. Oh, maybe the reason why they're acting that way towards me is because of the things that they faced in their childhood. Those small things, those small excuses that you make for them is giving leeway to the person to hurt you even more because they cannot give you the bare minimum. But you're allowing someone who can't give you the bare minimum to continuously have access to you. You control the people that have access to you. So you can't allow someone who can't give you the basis of any form of relationship possible, if they can't give you any of those qualities and they can't fulfill your needs in that area, then that person isn't giving you the bare minimum and then you're going to end up being affected by it. You need to stop normalizing people who don't believe in your potential and never feel apologetic when you know that you deserve better and you know that someone else is capable of giving that to you. Best believe there is somebody out there who's willing to give you the bare minimum. You just need to make sure that you find that person who's willing to give you the bare minimum and much more, which is what you deserve. Now, this brings me to the second thing that you never, ever, 
ever need to apologize for and this is not making yourself too available to other people. Now it's one thing to be known as someone who's always there for their loved ones, for their friends, for their family, significant other, which is an amazing thing. But if you find that you have to drop every single thing for every single Tom, Dick and Harry that comes your way, people are going to lose respect for you because they know they have easy access to you. Because they know that regardless of whatever they need, you will stop time. You will put everything down just to help them. And it's important to be a helpful person. But if you find that you need to help every single person who comes your way, and even if it means that you have to risk doing a number of things in order to help the other person, that's only damaging to you because the person knows that you're just easy and access to you is easy. So they'll continuously use it to their advantage. They take advantage of you. A lot of the times that will not be reciprocated because they know that they can always just come to you, but you end up losing a lot of energy helping somebody else who won't do the same for you because sometimes you end up helping people who you don't even know that well or you find yourself in very sticky situations that can cause you damage, that can cause you harm because you spend so much of your time trying to help the other person and you went to all lengths to make sure that the person was helped. Yes, bend over backwards for people that you care about, but if you find that it's damaging you and you feel like the person is always asking and asking and asking you for help, but they can never do the same for you, they can never be as available to you, then that is something that you need to run away from and you should never apologize for not making yourself too available to other people because your availability is earned. So don't just give it on a silver platter to anybody. Never apologize for giving away your availability from the jump because at the end of the day, like I said, it is something that's earned. Not anyone can just have access to that. You need to make sure that the person who has access to you and the person who has access to the extent of your availability has earned. It can't just be given to them because it's something that has to be earned. Now, the third thing that you should never, ever, 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 ever apologize for is being objective about your feeling. Now, the moment you feel like you need to compromise your feelings out of fear of hurting the other person's feelings, then that means that that is the root of the problem. That is the epicenter of it. That is where it all starts. Now, when someone has wronged you in whatever circumstance it may be, don't trick your mind into thinking that your feelings are invalid because there's a reason why you're feeling that way in the first place. If someone has wronged you and every time you're around them, let's say you haven't addressed what you're feeling and let's say your partner, you got into an argument with your partner, for example, you got into an argument with your best friend or something like that. And every time you're around them, because you haven't addressed the issue yet, you feel a sense of heaviness because you haven't yet addressed it you haven't expressed your feelings don't invalidate that and say no 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 i'm just going crazy or whatever there's a reason why you're feeling that way so you need to get to the root of the problem to make sure that you don't continue feeling that way so if you find that you need to always make excuses for what you're feeling and you're not actually taking a direct route to the problem then you need to deal with what's inside you need to deal with the heaviness and what whatever you're feeling because there is a reason why you're feeling that way so don't think it's okay to invalidate it because at the end of the day you're human you feel things people will hurt you and it's okay to feel that way as long as you deal with it and it depends on how you deal with it so if you confront someone about something about the way you're feeling or whatever and then you leave the conversation feeling like you're the one that has to apologize for how they made you feel then the level of toxicity is really really unmatched because if you're expressing something let's say the example that I used about getting into an argument with your partner for example if you express how you're feeling and say look you hurt me in terms of this 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 this, this. you did xyz that made me feel really really hurt and I felt upset I was angry I was disappointed but then you leave the conversation instead of it being resolved you end up feeling 10 times worse because you feel like oh you're the one that has a problem because you felt that way are you human if you don't feel anything if you feel upset with something, if you feel angry, if you feel irritated, if you feel annoyed by a particular person and you try and invalidate that and start making yourself look like the bad guy for having feelings, then you're invalidating your humanity and you are a human. So if you're a human, you're going to feel things. Someone is going to hurt your feelings, but don't say that, oh no, I'm not normal because I'm feeling that way because ultimately you're not human if you can't feel. The severity of your feelings is not an indication of how much you need to apologize for something. If you're really hurt by something or even if something makes you extremely happy, don't pardon yourself for feeling that way. Now this brings me to the fourth and final thing that you never ever 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 need to apologize for and this is especially in relation to people that you care about. This is when you give someone tough love. Now don't get it twisted, there's a fine line between tough love and just general judgment. There's a difference between telling your friend that, look, I think you need to do this, this, this. I think you I think you need to change this, this, this. And what you tell them is going to build them. When you judge them, you leave them feeling worse. When you give someone tough love, especially your friend or your significant other or a family member, 
it's supposed to leave them feeling much better. It's a hard pill to swallow when you're giving someone tough love, but then it's going to help them at the end of the day. When you're just being judgmental of somebody, there's no real direction. The person isn't gonna leave the conversation feeling much better. So there's a fine difference between the two of them and you need to make sure that you don't get them twisted. If your friend comes to you and they feel like they've put on so much weight and you say, yeah, you actually do look a bit fat and like, yeah, you look a lot worse, you let yourself go. That's being judgmental. But then tough love would be like, okay, yeah, I feel like I haven't seen you in the happiest light possible. So let's help you get to where you want to be and get you back in the shape that you want to be. We'll work on it together and we'll see where it goes. That's tough love. You're telling them that, look, yeah, I can see you're not happy in where you are now, but I'm gonna help you get to where you want to be so that you get back in the shape that I know you can be in. You're saying it in a way that's going to build them and motivate them to get back in the shape that they want to be in. But if you're being judgmental, you're just, kind of adding on to their pain, you're adding on to their anger, you're gonna leave them feeling much worse. So by the end of it all, let's say if they don't receive the tough love in a great way, at the end of it, later on, let's say years down the line, they're gonna look back on the, on the advice that you gave them. They were like, wow, I'm so grateful for, for the advice that Brittany gave, or I'm so grateful for the advice that um, person X gave me because it's going to help them in the long run. But then if you find that the person looks back to what you said from like years prior to their thoughts, and then they think, oh my gosh, the way this person went about their words really hurt my feelings and everything, they're going to remember you for being judgmental. So don't get the two confused. If someone comes to you for an honest opinion, don't hurt their feelings, but tell them how, tell them what you think and make sure that you go about it in a mature way. Don't leave them feeling much worse than what they're already feeling because that's not what tough love is about. Tough love is telling someone something that they've been avoiding hearing for a very long time, but then once they're told it, then it kind of gives them a wake up call. Judgment is when you tell someone something that maybe they didn't really want to hear about themselves, but then you kind of made them feel worse about it. So make sure that you don't get the two confused. So never apologize for your well-intentioned honesty because I can guarantee you it may not help the person there and then if the person doesn't receive it well, but it will definitely help them in the long run. So I hope this video helped you and I hope all of these things I mentioned helped you and I hope you take them into your stride as well. As always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share and hit the bell to be notified when I post new videos. Stay safe, everyone. God bless you all. Bye.